have started uh, this series of top tens dedicated uh, to the memory of uh, my gran who sadly passed away on December 21st, 2019. Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Redshaw here. Welcome to the first video of 2019 and it's the first in a series of top tens. And that series involves top tens. 2018 alongside a couple of top 10 lists to get ready for 2019 but nevertheless my first top 10 list here is my top 10 games of 2018 since i since i got back into gaming properly in 2013 my word it's been a heck of a year it's been a heck of a journey and each year has just been getting better and better and better. From my experiences anyway, not just from everybody else's. My experiences are what make my top 10 stand out because unlike those professional top 10s, they just go by critic scores and fan praise. Mostly critic scores. But beside the point. You want to know how difficult this top 10 was to put together? I had a short list of over 20 games. And when I did my top 10 games of the year so far, earlier earlier in the year, uh, was like at the midway point in 2018, I had just barely scratched the surface of a top 10. Barely. But now, as more games came out, my goodness me, what a year it's been. So, without further ado, let's get started. With the rules of the top 10, they are as follows. Okay, number one, it has to be a 2018 release. And number two, it has to be... Right, with regards to the 2018 release date, meaning... Well, number two, it has to be a new game. It has to be a brand new game. So, no remasters or ports from other systems. Which rules out... Hellblade rules out the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy for a second year running because A, it's a remaster and B, it got ported to Xbox, Nintendo Switch and PC earlier this year. And number three also rules out Spyro. Because, again, it's a remaster of all three games. Even though only one of the games is available on the disc. And the other two you have to download, which is... UNACCEPTABLE! Thank you, Lemon Grab. I am so gutted I never got to watch Adventure Time during its original run. But hey, maybe the complete Adventure Time box sets will um, help keep me occupied whenever they decide to release that, which they more than likely will. Anyway, and number three, I have to have played the games in order for them to be eligible for this list. So, where do we even begin? Here we go. This is it. And like I say, this has been a really difficult year. The games on this list have all been amazing, apart from a few, which I will get into shortly. I might be here a while, so bear with me. So let's get started. This is my top 10 games, 2018. Number 10, a game that released right at the start of the year, Dragon Ball Fighters, or Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Not really, there's really no other way I can describe it apart from apart from it's basically Marvel vs. Capcom but 
with the Dragon Ball characters. Such a fantastic game. Fast paced, animation incredible, and above all else, a phenomenal experience. Now officially part of the um, uh, fighting game competitions. It's going to be exciting to see how well this game transcends into the uh, competitive scene. Number nine. Now who would have thought we'd have a Lego game on this list? Lego Incredibles, to be exact. You're playing through the you're playing through the two Incredible film Incredibles films, starting with Incredibles two, interestingly, which is what this was marketed around. And from there, you managed to go through some of the most iconic moments from The Incredibles one. Fourteen years we had to wait for The Incredibles two. Will that feature in my top 10 films of 2018? We'll need to stay tuned to find out. Anyway, it captures the spirit of what a LEGO game should be. And that's what makes it so good. Being, go being able to go through your favourite scenes. In particular, Jack-Jack versus the Raccoon. That is, hands down, the funniest moment of the entire film. And the fact we got to see that play out and you got to control Jack-Jack in that moment of the game. Beggars believe how incredible that was. <laughs> incredible. Wah, wah. The voice acting is pretty much on point. You've got a majority of the original actors for, for their respective characters. Especially Edna Mudd. Just make sure you remember no capes. Talk, uh, talking of capes, honey, where's my super suit? Where is my super suit? And one, and uh, for like, um. I believe these um, fourth year running, I managed to one hundred percent a game. But what platform did I one hundred percent this on? Well, one hundred percented it on PlayStation Four, which means I got the elusive platinum trophy. Number eight next. Oh boy. Detroit become human. Whew. Have fun trying to platinum this one. Because you've got to go through every single branch and every single possibility. But that's what makes it so good. It has a lot of replay value. And at the end of the day, like I say, it's a fantastic game. PlayStation 4 exclusive. And it has brilliant social commentary of the androids uh, taking over people's lives. And just all round incredible. It's difficult, difficult to work out how to describe it without criticizing it. It plays pretty much the same as Heavy Rain because it's made by the same guys that created Heavy Rain Quantic Dream.
Now, I can't say, I can't really say anything because, I can't really say anything plot-wise, but because it goes into major spoiler territory, but you've got three androids you control as you, Connor, Marcus, and Kara, each with their own story. And it all builds up to a huge climax, which I'll, which, I, which again, I won't spoil here because I'm not that sort of person. Definitely give this one, a, definitely give this one a, a playthrough if you get a chance, or multiple playthroughs if you want to go for a platinum trophy. Number seven. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is where I can start talking about these games properly. And this one's no different. Forza Horizon 4. Continuing the highly successful Horizon series, this one sees you head home to the UK. Well, home in my case, but for my fellow UK viewers. Then, from there, the Horizon Festival includes Pop, includes uh, Edinburgh as well. Right about that. Not just that. Dynamic seasons as well, with some incredible visuals, and like I say, dynamic season changes, which I've yet, to, which apart from the tutorial, I've yet to, um, tutorial and the intro, I've yet to actually experience. But my goodness me, what a game it is! Best Forza game I've ever played. And soundtrack, need I say more, it's one of the best soundtracks, as, as far as licensed soundtracks are concerned, it's one of the best I've ever heard. Horizon Block Party is my go-to station for Horizon, and considering I wasn't, I wasn't really set on a particular station for Horizon 3, Horizons 1 and 2, it was Horizon Base Arena, but I'll be damned. Horizon 4, you've gone and hit it out of the park. Like I say, visually stunning. And for, and the Forza, the Forza Thon events are back. And on top of that, you've got, si you've got like side stories as well. Um, one which I just managed to 100% was the uh, La Racer, who was uh, a racing game streamer, going through their top 10 favorite uh, games or cars and games of all time. I, I mean, these games from, I think, so many references to so many games, like, like Need for Speed and Sega Rally. She even does Game Over, she even does Game Over, yeah! And then Daytona. <sighs> that was just amazing. Uh, stunt driver, drift club. Um, you've got so many PR stunts as well. You've got your danger zone, danger zones, speed zones, speed traps. <sighs> I could I could talk about I could talk about this game all day. But it's it difficult. It's difficult to just summarize it. So I'm going to try my best. Sound awesome soundtrack check visuals check. And just overall, a fantastic game. Definitely a must-have for Forza Horizon fans. Which, by the way, you can get right out of the gate thanks to Xbox Game Pass. I mentioned that I could talk about Horizon 4 all day. But this, this isn't just a game I could talk about all day. The sport I could talk about all day. Number six, it was inevitable it was gonna pop up on this list. F1 2018. You guys knew that you guys knew F1 was going to feature on the list this year. It features every year, but why is it so low on the list? You normally have it in at least top five, maybe top three. 
Not this year, folks. That's how good this year has been. I mean, interestingly, I only have two sports games on my list this year, and both of them are racing games. F1 2018. They bring the theme in, composed by Brian Tyler. That theme's definitely grown on me over time this year, and just... What can I say, really? What can I say? It looks amazing. The tracks look amazing. Uh, what else? Interviews are back. We haven't seen them since 2011, 2012. And the online mode has improved as well. So not only are you being ranked on your skill, but also your safety rating, which is how clean you race with fellow drivers. The cleaner you race, the higher your safety rank. Which I've got an S rank for, by the way. Yes, I sound like I'm showing off. But not very often you can say that, I, not very often for, for somebody like me who doesn't normally do online gaming, I did not anticipate being able to get all the online achievements. But would you believe it I did? I only went and got all the online achievements. Now I just need to get the rest from there. Uh, well, like I say, there's, there's not really much else I can say beyond that because it's such an amazing game. Definitely one for the F1 fans out there. And the research and development has taken on taken on a new um, on a new um, it's taken on a world of its own, where you could potentially lose upgrades based on you. I'll say, you could end up losing upgrades. Thanks to regulation changes. How on earth... How on earth they manage to improve the games every single year is just amazing. And all in all, one I highly recommend. Right, that's the, that's the uh, bottom half of the uh, top ten out of the way. Before we get into the uh, the top five, I'm going to go through some of the games that didn't quite make the cut, but they weren't even that good, in my opinion anyway. So here we go. So let's kick off with State of Decay 2. Follow up to uh, State of, uh, the first State of Decay game, which uh, came out uh, a few years ago. But State of Decay 2 was one of those games you could get from Xbox Game Pass on launch. And it didn't really play that much different, um, and after pl after playing the first State of Decay, it just felt like it was too big of a grind, in my opinion, and because of that, it just felt like it just felt there wasn't much of an improvement over the first game. Uh, sea of Thieves. People were highly anticipating this one, and were left ultimately disappointed. But 
Oh boy. The worst is the worst of this the worst of these dishonorable mentions is yet to come. Oh boy. Um Let's see if these launched with little to no content. Anyway, a way out. Now I had this in my top ten games of the 2018 so far a few months ago, but it has since been knocked into the dishonorable mentions. Why? Looking at the achievement list, I know it's a bizarre thing, but every game I've played, I've always managed to get some achievements. This one, we are way out. I didn't get any because I didn't know how to unlock them. I didn't know how to unlock the achievements. And apart from that, the descriptions for the achievements weren't exactly that great, so how was I supposed to know? Then, while yes, it's a great concept where just one copy of the game is needed between two people, but as a co-op, co-op is the only way you can play this game. And, whew, my goodness me, how's about that? I mean, a great concept, basically Prison Break and Shawshank Redemption. But, I don't even know what happened at the end because I didn't complete it. Now on to the big hitters. Let's see. Number four. Far Cry 5. Yeah. This game is just proof that Ubisoft still don't understand the meaning of the word difficulty. And right now they do not know the meaning of the word AI. Or oh, artificial intelligence, excuse me, but try telling them artificial intelligence. Do they have any? Of course they don't. The AI in this game is... A tro the, the friendly AI, to be more specific, is atrocious. There was one point where I just said, enough's enough. That point in the game was where I was trying to take down a helicopter. My AI partner had a rocket launcher. He's like, okay, I'll take the helicopter. I'll take the helicopter down. I'll take the chopper down. Then take the chopper down. I had the chopper marked. And it... AI said, nope, I'm not doing anything. To which I just thought, are you serious? No wonder so many people hated this game. And I'm not even going to go beyond that. We Happy Few. Oh. Well, this is proof of if you want your game to do well, don't release it broken. But sadly, that's what happened here. Multiple bugs, multiple glitches. And... That's ultimately what dragged it off the list. But the biggest casualty of this year, Fallout 76. Fans were hyped about it. I actually got it in the Black Friday sale, but then what happened? Um, an open world MMO Fallout game? Kind of ironic given the fact that they were trying to save player one, but Nope. No. They decided, nope, not going to do so. Oh, boy. 
So overall, overall these games were either bad or just flat out terrible from my experiences. Whatever you do, guys, the dishonorable mentions, Far Cry 5, A Way Out, We Happy Few, Sea of Thieves, Fallout 76, and State of Decay 2, avoid them like the plague. Just avoid them like the plague. Now on to the top five. Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh! Put those revolvers away, people! I know you're thinking, why on earth would you have why on earth would you have Red Dead Redemption 2 not the number one game of the year? Because if I did, I would be just like every other corporate little puppet. But I'm not a corporate puppet, and I'm better than that. So don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic game. Haven't tried the online component of it yet, but I'll get around to that. Red Dead Redemption 2. It's been eight years now since we last heard from the Old West. I was stunned to find out that we were going to be playing, that John Martin was in Red Dead Redemption 2 as well. I was about that. Because like, it was a case that as soon as I recognised the voice, I thought, wait a minute, have they just gone and done it? Quick Google search later. Would you believe it? They did. It's got a Magnificent Seven vibe to it. When I put it into my top 10 at most anticipated games of 2017. And then I believe in my top 10 most anticipated games of 2018 when it finally got a release date and then it got delayed but the delay was worth it so yeah from there arthur morgan is the main guy you play as again like i say it's got a magnificent seven vibe to it and it definitely lives up to the hype and you can definitely see why many people have it in Either their top 10 games of 28 in, in their top as, as their game of the year. But um, for me, for me, there were just other games that were just better. Because again, Red Dead Redemption 2, people knew that was coming for some time, but for me, like I say, I'm not a corporate puppet. Number four now, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. The last major game that I played in 2018. And it did not disappoint. First time I played it was the I was at a Smash Brothers competition just a few weeks ago. Everyone who's been in a Smash game previously is here. We've got some more DLC characters on the way as well, but when they're going to be released remains to be seen, or, or who those DLC characters are going to be, like I say, remains to be seen. There's more, more there's, a, there's, a new, there's a few new fighters as well. There's new few fighters. There's a few new fighters, new arenas, and there's a smash meter as well, which you can use in place of the smash ball. Which is one of the game mechanics. Which is one of the new game mechanics that I like. And the action's still just as fast paced as ever. And hey, eight player smash is back. And of course, GameCube controller, you can use as well, which is pretty cool. 
Now all we need is Waluigi to be in Smash Bros. That's all we need. We just need Waluigi and then everyone's going to be happy. Wow. Number three now. And... Boy! Come here, boy! <laughs> God of War, folks! What else could I possibly have? I mean, I had to have this here. It was my number one game of the year so far, a few months ago. But, knocked down a couple of pegs. Why? We're just about to find out. one of the most visually stunning games I've ever played. I've not played a God of War game previous prior to this. Kratos is boy or son, but we'll just go with boy. Kratos is boy, known as Arthreus, but he's just known as boy throughout most of the game. I mean, it, it got to the it got to the point where it was just so synonymous that uh, me and one of my friends, Luke, who made a guest appearance on my uh, podcast earlier this year, <laughs> we were like, "I'm just a poor boy. Nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy." <laughs> It's one of those coming of age games where Kratos is trying to minimize his anger. And what happens? Atreus ends up with that anger. And what ends up happening? Atreus ends up showing signs of his father. And the reveal at the end is just beggar's belief. And I will not spoil it here because I, like I say, I'm not that sort of person. It won the Game Awards for Game of the Year, which is hardly surprising. Number two now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I know, you, you think to yourself, why on earth did this boy put Shadow of the Tomb Raider ahead of God of War? Part of that's down to the fact that I've played the previous two Tomb Raider games. And again, like I say, I haven't played any of the God of War games prior to this. Whew. Oh boy. This is how you close out a tr fantastic reboot trilogy. Rebooted first in 2013. A six year period. And it did not disappoint. Further delving into the back, into Lara's past. And also, a lot of Mayan um, a lot of Mayan prophecies definitely, without a doubt, one of the best games of the year. Again, visually stunning. I say you've got new, again, you've got further improvements to the mechanics, and you've also got a more interesting 
uh, progression system as far as your abilities are concerned. And for, and for those reasons, that is what makes this the number two game of the year. But what could possibly be number one? Before we get into that, time to go into my honorable mentions. Dynasty Warriors 9, not much change as far as their gameplay is concerned, but great open world. Overcooked 2, again, just just there for minor tweaks to the uh, mechanics, but still a, still a great game, still over the top, still hilarious, and still chaotic. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution, fantastic tie into Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom for me. Onrush, a mixture of uh, Burnout with uh, a few other racing games as well. Uh, Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery, a mobile game, yes I know. This is how you do a Harry Potter game. Just being able to create your own character and have your own adventures in Hogwarts. New characters and some familiar ones as well. Music, really good as well. And NBA 2K19, this is the first time since since I started gaming properly, since I start, since I got back into gaming, this is the first time that we have not had an NBA game in the top ten. We had two K sixteen, two K seventeen, two K eighteen, but two K nineteen just missed out on the top ten thanks to the late edition of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Starting in, you start off in China and then you're in one of the lower leagues when you move to America before heading over to the NBA itself. So there we go, that's your honorable mentions out of the way. Now for a recap of the top 10 so far. Number 10, Dragon Ball Fighters. Number 9, Lego Incredibles. Number 8, Detroit Become Human. Number 7, Forza Horizon 4. Number six, F1 2018. I'm pretty sure I said this one. Yeah. Anyway, number six, F1 2018. Number five, Red Dead Redemption 2. Number four, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Number three, God of War. No, God of War. War! And number two, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. There's one major name that we haven't mentioned yet. And... That name, and my game of the year for 2018, Spider-Man. Insomniac Games have done justice to the Spider-Man name and delivered, for me, the greatest superhero game ever made. The praise for this game is endless. The side quests, the story, the visuals, the gameplay mechanics, I mean, just wow. And on top of that, <sighs> amazing characters. And how Spider-Man's portrayed, done right. Both sides of Spider-Man, the suit and Peter Parker, both sides done perfectly. One of the best moments was, well, with all the footage. Love seeing you two together again. You always were my favorites. No way! Yeah. 
Insomniac Games only went and got a Stan Lee cameo in the game. When I first saw the cameo, I was like a kid on Christmas morning. Because that is how you do a game. And of course, with it being a Marvel property, it was not surprising that they had a post credit scene. It also includes Miles Morales as well, who is part of the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse film. Still, get, still to get around to seeing that. But I'll get around to that soon enough. So anyway, this is it. This is how you do a superhero game. And it's for me, my number one game. 2018. One I highly recommend, not just for gamers, but for superhero fans, in particular those with Spider-Man. Get the DLC, get the season pass as well, because all the DLC is out now. And on that note, that's my top 10 games of the year. Are there any games that I missed out that you think should be on the list? Or would you make any changes to the list? Feel free to sound off in the comments, folks. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. If you enjoyed what you saw, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be a part of how to follow on this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom, click the bell to join the like to be here as notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. I've got... My 2019 plans on the left, my top 10 players list on the right. I'm putting it right there, but anyway. So like I said, my 2019 plans on the left, top 10's playlist on the right. Stay tuned for my top 10 films of 2018. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful as always.